Much of early cinema's color theory stems from critics' understanding of color usage in painting. A theorist, Rudolf Arnheim, states that color provides wider possibilities than black and white and at the same time permits of a very exact and genuine style. But then he also argues that this early element alters the reality film is meant to capture, since back then color was unnaturally added. What I will explore in this text is how the evolution of color technology has ultimately paved the way for movies like WALL-E to even exist. During the silent period of film, one of the first coloring techniques known was hand coloring, which was both skilled and slow work. In terms of the quantity of copies produced, it was quite limited, reaching its peak in Europe by 1905. The technique was also limited to the capacity of the coloring artist and was never fully developed industrially. Tinting and toning took over as the newer processes of coloring, followed by Technicolor, which was a dual process dyeing of film. Although the cost to color a film was expensive, it was an important part of the redesign differentiating the new product from the old. Enter Disney Studios with Donald Graham who revolutionized the cinema of animation by simply applying rules of artistry to their illustrations. When Disney began work with Technicolor in 1932, it was Graham's mastering of complex color composition that set them apart from their black and white primitive competition. He brought to the screen three-dimensional and personified appearances simply by the ways of shifting hues and color values in order to suggest depth and background. Now, when viewing Wally through the lens of color theory, the incredible realistic detail is only achieved by advanced use of color application. His character and his world show layers of dirt and grime that are simply painted on by an artist in a computer studio. Every object in the scenes that Wally so famously rummages through has been created with different levels of saturation, hue, and color value to show depth, dimensionality, and differentiate them from Wally and the surroundings. We understand Wally to be a film that is incredibly Latin with messages, and the only way to properly decode them is to understand first their significance by way of the artist's coloring. For example, by looking at one scene when Wally enters outer space, a viewer can identify different tones and perhaps different connotations simply by recognizing the different colors and what they might suggest. Wally is curious, he is amazed, and so are we by the vibrancy. Now when you shoot the very same scene using only black and white, it seems to have lost a certain amount of depth and without a doubt our curiosity. We are now not trying to piece together what the scene could mean, but instead we are trying to figure it out. It lacks in a sense. Now when Wally enters the world of the Axiom, not only is he exposed to a new realm of differentiating colors, but we are too as the viewers. We identify these as something excessive because they are much different in comparison to the colors we have seen in his dull, garbage-laden world.
Everything is bright, everything is colorful, everything is trying to compete to get our attention. Just as Wally might be overwhelmed with this, we are too, but we have also seen this elsewhere in our own advertisement within world. Therefore, the color is used as a relation. Just as colors have signified meanings in our own real world, they do in Wally as well. But beyond that, Wally is simply constructed by way of color and would not exist without the evolution that took place many years ago.